It's May 24th, 2023. Okay. <laughs> I had to check. Welcome yeah, in. Where How's am I? It? Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. There's not much happening in town. No, it's no a news. slow news day. Not anything going on. So we thought we'd just hang out here. <laughs> no, but we, do, <laughs> we do have some guests we in do. the studio. So we yeah. do have some exciting things to get to. Lots of things on the calendar. We're gonna, and we're going to talk about some expo stuff coming up. Uh, so we should probably get going. Let's do it. Yeah. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Around 10. I'm Harvey Couch and that's Kathy Lindsay. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I keep looking back and forth. I, I need to pick where, my spot and stick with it. <laughs> are you doing good? I'm doing great. Okay. Uh, you know, busy. It's busy time. And I've been saying uh -huh. this since spring. Once the weather gets nice, all the stuff is happening. It's true. And then school's ending and there's all the activities and the sports stuff and the dance recitals and the plays. Yep. And Graduations. We're in the midst of it. I know. It's exciting times. It is. Um, so, oh, again, a lot of a lot of news to cover today. Yes, we have we have special special guests here with yes. lots of important things to talk about. For sure. Um, so let, I want to get started. Let's do our question of the day though first. Okay. Yesterday was was a beautiful day. It was lovely. I was I was on a, a phone call, uh, a work call at the end of the day, and yeah. I was sitting outside. Okay. And the birds were singing. Yeah. And I heard the guy who I was talking to was like, "Are you sitting outside?" I'm like, "Yep." He's yep. like, "I am too." I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> why not?" So that leads us to the question of the day, which is, "What is your idea of the perfect day with okay. the perfect weather?" Okay. You know, this is this is the time. Yeah. You know, it's gonna it's not too hot yet. Right. We're right. You know, that's not too far away. Yes. So what what do you which I think I know what your I th can I guess what your answer is going to be? Hmm. Sure. Is it would it be floating on some sort of craft? It would going down a river. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, surrounded by people that I love. Okay. <laughs> is it that time you guys got it uh, cleaned we were, up? Well, the... we were talking about it last night. We it, we still have work to do on the okay. boat, um, and it's you know holiday weekend coming up, and I was going through the things, and I'm like. We might already be booked all weekend. I was oh, talking about the things we've been invited to, so it might be June before we get the boat out. Not, you you got to get it out on Memorial Day weekend. Kathy. Well, well, you need to get it out before Mother's Day, as you far as I'm concerned. But I'm not in charge of that. Mm. So he's anyway. been busy doing things. He's been busy. <laughs> um, all right, that's good. I don't. Yeah. I don't think I have the boat, but I just again, just being outside is what. Yeah. That's my thing. On a pretty day, I'm happy to go take a walk or a hike. Yeah. Or, or whatever, but I just, yeah, just sitting outside. Well, too. and and again, if boat aside, mm -hmm. yeah, I love sitting on the porch mm -hmm. and waving uh, at the neighbors, waving just... at the neighbor, the cars that drive mm -hmm, by, mm -hmm. <laughs> or even if you're just like at the beach, even just sitting like on your balcony mm -hmm. and just watching everything, but just enjoying the breeze and yeah. the nature. All nice. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you let us know what you think. Hop on our Facebook feed and uh, and you can comment what your idea of a perfect day is on the on the perfect weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do, if you're not on Facebook, you can hit us. We got the full table. Local stars, <laughs> Steve Brooks and Paul Looney are here from the uh, Frankfurt Independent Schools Education Foundation. Guys, thanks for coming. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate <laughs> it. Well, we're we're glad you're here because. Uh, the organization that you guys represent is very important to uh, a lot of people here in our community. So, why don't you just tell us, first of all, just a little bit of history about the foundation and how it was founded and stuff like that. I'll, I'll let Steve talk. He was well, one of our founding members. I was one of the founding members. Um, several teachers and administrators and interested uh, citizens of the community decided to get together, I believe, in 98. I think it is about right. Uh, and trying to help the school system do things. People don't realize the Frankfurt Independent School System, their district, 70, I think it's 75 or 76 percent of the property within their limits are not taxable. Right. <laughs> because it's either government or churches. Yep. So that really limits what they can do. So our goal is to try to help 
raise money and do different things. Um, we're very fortunate. Uh, the Sour, the Frank W. Sour Community Trust Fund has been really good to Frankfort, not just the Frankfort Independent Schools, but when I ran the Parks Department, every now and then Frank Sour would call me and say, Mom and I got a little money, said so you had a project. Mm. <laughs> and one of the first things they did in 1980, when, when the flood came through in 78, we, we, uh, it wiped out South Frankfort Park, which there were probably six or eight families living in there. Anyway, he, uh, so we built the park. And then in the mid-90s, the, the playground got bad, and so he, they rebuilt it for us. Uh, with the school system, they have, of course, in 1921, I believe, Frank's grandfather donated the Frankfurt the Sour football field to the, to the school system. And it's been there ever since. And um, so two years ago, uh, they gave us a hundred thousand dollars to improvements, and we put new roofs on the the, the what we call the um, dra- the dungeon over there, <laughs> which used to be the home where we dressed, where everybody dressed there. Okay, and that the what field house? The field house yeah. and the concession stand, and we painted the bleachers, and they put uh, Bermuda grass in, and bought mowers and that kind of thing. And now, one of the things we want to appeal to people is that they have committed $75,000 to build restrooms for the football field. It's probably been 25 years since the restrooms were taken out. Oh, wow. um, so they've been using porta potties, and it's right. kind of embarrassing. That's right. So we want to uh, appeal to the Frankfurt Independent School folks, people that, that have graduated, uh, to donate to us. And we match that 75000 we can build restrooms. So that's one of the big things we're working on right now. Um, we do a lot of things. Paul can talk about uh, the Rosens, what they've done for us and, and money. But we, we, um, we just try to make improvements. We try to help the schools when they want to go on trips and stuff. And we, we try to do things. So it's pretty, pretty good. We've, we've got um, people from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s uh, on the board as volunteers. Uh, we need some more. So if somebody out there wants to do it, let us know. We well, if they're okay. interested in doing something like that, how do they get hooked Just up? Just con- contact us, me or Paul, or right. any of the board members, and we'll go through the board members. Uh, Sheila Mason, um, uh, Catherine Dutton Mitchell, um, Bill Rogers, uh, Ed Rawl, Polly Coblin was. Of course, Polly uh, unfortunately passed away. Um, and I'm going to leave somebody out. Um, Nora. Nora. Freedom. Nora Beasley and, and – uh, also, yeah, she used to work for me at the parks, and I've forgotten. But anyway, <laughs> so they can just let us know, and we'll be giving our P.O. box out. They can write us a letter or a note. And, um, but, you know, we just try to make improvements and make things better for the kids. Yeah. Um, so I know you mentioned some different projects. So if somebody is going to give funds, what can they expect it to go to besides well, so great. So, see, different. I think we'll mention FISF.org is our website. And okay. Nora actually, Beasley, when she came on a year or so ago, has really helped ramp that up. So, we have a much improved website, but on there, there's opportunities to give online. And it also lists the different programs that people can give to. So, we, not just athletics, we are, you know, obviously supporting teachers and classroom activities and school, you know, academics is a big focus of ours. So, um, thanks to the generosity of the Rosen family, we actually have two different large grant programs, one for STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math, which is a $100,000 matching grant, so we're looking to match that grant, along with a teacher grant, another $100,000 teacher grant, which supports um, continued education, uh, teachers getting national board certified, things like that, so helping really support classroom learning. So those are two specific academic things that people can give directly to on our website. Um, and, and then just generally supporting, and we've, since we formed, have helped support school trips that the schools would do, whether it's locally or abroad, uh, looking at classroom resources. We have several different scholarships that the foundation supports. So um, we house the George Wool Scholarship, which is an arts scholarship that's given out to a senior every year. So, uh, you know, there's a variety of things that people can give to, along with just the general fund, to help the schools. As Steve mentioned, um, 
there's almost 80% now, I think, of untaxable property mm -hmm. in the district. So it's a big challenge for independent school districts. Can Frankfurt is uh, the top three or bottom three, if you look at it, as yeah. far as untaxable sure. properties within the boundaries. And we're not getting any more land area <laughs> as an independent district or, <clears throat> or growth. Yeah. So we're not going to build new subdivisions. So it's a challenge. So uh, fortunately, we're a 501c3 uh, that was formed in 2007. Actually, the, what came from the 98, when they initially got going, was a, a a formation of a, a formal 501c3 mm -hmm. so all donations are tax deductible and um, if people want to give but we are fortunate that we have and there's three at this table really uh, alumni that are very vocally like supportive of the frankfurt independent school district uh, and what it what it stands for uh, to this day so yeah i tell people the the best six years of my life were frankfurt I, you know it, it it's always been a special school and all the guys in my class, uh, 67, we, we get together once a month and we talk about the teachers that we had and mm -hmm. how they uh, made a difference in our lives. And they really did. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, you know, we, we give two F.D. Wilkinson scholarships a year, which uh, are, are based on a, a lot of things, characters, a lot of it. Uh, we give um, a George Wolf scholarship. Uh, we fund the... Um, um, this is a new one, the Carol and Kelsey uh, Family um, Math Improvement Award. Uh, in 1933, there was a teacher named Emma Pindar, science. I never heard of this because you have to be smart to get this award. <laughs> so when I was in high school, I didn't know what it was. Uh, but it has lasted through last year. They gave enough money. Her, her husband was a doctor in Woodford County. She was a science teacher at Frankfurt High. Um, last year, the money ran out. Uh, Dr. Saxine and her husband have picked it up. Oh, nice. It's a $500 scholarship yeah. for science, and it's it's based on the highest GPA. Um, and so, you know, we, we do a lot of good stuff. And um, um, so, you know, we, we're trying to continue the we, – we got a really great superintendent. We, we just – we all really like uh, – Sherry, she's she's doing a great job, and uh, so a lot of good things are going on. You know, the gym got renovated what three years ago, four years ago. Uh, we're doing a lot of good stuff to the football field, of course, the Sire soccer field, which the family Sire family uh, foundation also funded a lot of that. Uh, when I built that, when I was at Parks, uh, Frank Sire gave us sixty thousand dollars, and we had matching money, and so you know. So we're we're just into a, a lot of good stuff. As the one outsider from Frankfurt Independent Schools, where where I where I grew up, uh, schools you're very much identified with your school, and that was the thing that was very I felt like was unique for where I. But when I came to Frankfurt, I had never seen anything like it. <laughs> the amount of like identification to Frankfurt Independent, it's awesome that you guys continue that. So, Paul, you talked about the different projects that are that are happening with the foundation if people are donate want to donate uh it's not just given to the general fund right if they want to say like i want to give money towards the stem program or towards you know classroom projects Absolutely. or travel or any of those things those are options so, yeah you can uh, so we also have a po box uh, 5443 here in frankfurt but yeah they can designate online if, with their donations so they can specifically if they want it mm -hmm. to go to something like stem mm -hmm. or the arts but well, we wanted people to have that opportunity because you know a lot of people they may have, some people may have played football and some people may really be vocally supportive of the arts. And right. that's one thing that's going on right now is uh, Ms. Satterley has really revived the choir band programs along with the Goins at uh, the mm -hmm. city schools. I'm, I'm personally glad to see that as a, as a former uh, choir and band same, member same, at, the, yeah. at the high school. So, you know, there's a lot of excite, exciting things going on, a lot of passion for the school district. But, yeah, so people, you know, based on what you want to give, you can designate on, online what your designation would go towards. Awesome. One of the really neat things we have done is, in, you know, 1956, 1956 when uh, integration started, uh, they closed Mayo, well, they didn't close Mayo Underwood until 64, but 56 is when they allowed students to come in. My brother Bruce was uh, at Frankfurt High, and uh, Mr. Wilkinson, who was, uh, you know, he was 5'6", 135 pounds, and everybody was scared to death of him, <laughs> and he was quite a guy, and uh, I took care of him in the last 10 years of his life. But Bruce said he called all the students in in 1956, last assembly in the spring, and said, now next fall there will be students here that look different than you and there will be no problems. And he said there never were. Uh, but one of the neat things we've really done is 
we we we've got a hall of fame. We've got hall of fame for mm -hmm. athletic hall of fame, and we've got other hall of fame. Um, and we've included a lot of Mayo Wonderwood students and people. And I think we've got two going in this year in the in the hall of fame. So it's really neat, and we've done a lot of stuff. Ben Smith's been real uh, um, supportive of that, and he's put a lot of money into that. And so you know, we we we've tried to include that in. Um, so do y'all do a ceremony for the Hall of Fame induction? We is do it at graduation. At graduation, okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, when the four years that I was in high school, actually I, I say six, but it really was four. <laughs> uh, but I was lucky, they passed me out, they just felt sorry <laughs> for me. Uh, there's 31 millionaires in the four years that I went to Franklin High School. Really? Which tells you that somebody, so for some reason, people are successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the amazing thing, there have been three students in the history of Franklin High, they got drafted in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I played with two of them. Wow. Um, Bobby Jones and, and um, Bobby Bodell. Bobby played at Maryland. Yeah. Now, he didn't make the NBA, but they were drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was a guy named Brown, I think, in 51. But there are just a lot of neat things that go on, and it's a family affair, and we've continued that. Well, we sure do appreciate you guys uh, coming out to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So one last time. Uh, what's the website if people want to donate? So FISEF.org, F-I-S-E-F.org. That's our website. You can okay. go there, and actually there's a tab there for the Hall of Fame. So we're on our, mm. I think, 10th or 11th class now. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's they started when I was on the Board of Education, and I really appreciated it. Uh, the seniors getting to see the people that have come before them and sure. what they have gone on to do. Well, we've had a dean of the Harvard School of Law. I mean, a lot of things that people come from mm -hmm. little old Frankfurt High School. Right. Uh, and that the world is kind of at their their doorstep so it's yeah. it's exciting I mean, look at us <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> well I, I tell you a, a neat lady that just went in our hall of fame this year diane daly mm -hmm. uh diane played on the lpga she was president in 1984 uh she was a girls the ladies golf coach and a assistant ad at wake forest university mm -hmm. if you go down there it's the arnold palmer slash diane daly golf practice facility mm -hmm. oh wow so there's a lot of that yeah and you know it's it's in um uh, so there are just a lot of successful kids and it continues on it's just amazing well we hope that it continues on even further along with the help from the community yeah. and obviously from the foundation so we appreciate the work you all are doing yeah. for sure all right Okay. Well, that's good. Do you have um, other things to talk about? Well, I want to congratulate Paul <laughs> on an undefeated season as the head coach of a U12 <laughs> soccer team at, at hey, Wilford oh, County. Hey, oh, there they are. There's a squad. <laughs> Much thanks to my assistant coach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've had fun. It's been a good year. There's Paul and Harvey and, yeah. and their kiddos. Yeah. So congratulations to you guys. Thanks. It was Thank a lot you. of hard work, I know. Yeah. Well, we got a big tournament coming up next weekend. Right. So okay. We get it done. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys so much for coming, and uh, best of luck. And, you know, stay in touch. Let us know if there are things that we sure. can share with, yeah, with for the, sure. with the folks. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. We'll be right. happy to do it. So enjoy the rest of your uh, your Wednesday. Beautiful thank day. you. Yeah, yes. we'll go find a good spot to get on phone calls. Outside. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. The Capital Expo is back with two days of fun and free entertainment in downtown Frankfurt. All your favorites will be there. The food and drinks, the carnival rides, continuous live entertainment on two stages. The artists are back with Kentucky Woodcrafts, handmade jewelry, paintings, pottery, and more. Run in the Funnel Cake 5K, take the kids to the Children's Festival, or check out the classic car show and top it all off with a bang at Rumble on the River, a huge fireworks display. The 50th anniversary of Expo, June 2nd and 3rd on Broadway in downtown Frankfurt. All right, we're back. Hey. Hey. We're back in our normal spots. We are. So that was fun. You yeah. guys, you Frankfurt fun. independent people. Frankfurt half people. I like it. It's yeah. good that you guys are. There's I a mean, bond there. And, and the, we're just, a smaller school and a little bitty district in the downtown. It's just. Well, and just like the, the you know, the basketball arena, the football field, it just like yeah. oozes history. They're old school. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's just, not always the best thing. 
<laughs> well, no, but I mean, it's like, you know, you love to go to Wrigley Field or Fenway Park. Right. There's places that like, you know, they have, I don't know, just there's the, the echoes. Yes. Right. For sure. So, um, okay. Well, we're still in the community calendar. We are. Do we do that? We've got, well, Crystal gave us an answer on the question of the day, which okay. is your idea of a perfect day. Okay. Uh, she says, sleep in, get some Duncan. Do some, some early you. retail therapy and get some lunch. <laughs> then spend. <laughs> it's not like that doesn't happen every, every single time. time. Mm-hmm. So I'm consistent. Then spend the rest of the day at home <laughs> watching my favorite show, Cuddling with My Cats. Oh, That sounds like a good day. It's a good day? Like, uh, I mean, I like to do the full, you know, I'm with the donuts in the morning. I feel like that gets me a good start to the day. Yeah. And then maybe feel like, then maybe do a little something that kind of makes you feel like you've accomplished something. In the morning, and then you can just check out the rest of the day. Like what? I mean, just how small? Oh, it can be pretty small, but I mean, yeah. Put a load of laundry in? Yeah. Well, maybe more than putting a (laughs) load of laundry in, but like, you know, uh, vacuuming a room or, you know, wiping off some counters. or. That's why you have kids. Do your kids do that stuff for you? Yeah, she's starting to because she wants money. Mm. Oh, (laughs) okay. Well, we need to talk after the show. Okay. What your strategies are there. Okay. Um, okay, let's keep going through our community calendar. Okay. Um, the uh, tonight, or no, it's actually this morning. I don't know why I saw tonight What's at happening? 11 a.m. <laughs> Juniper Hills here? Park, the 2023 Kentucky EMS Memorial Service to remember our fallen EMS heroes who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So um, that'll be a nice uh, service at 11 a.m. this morning at Juniper Hill Park. Yeah, I think they're going to have nice weather too. Yeah. Uh, the Grow With Us celebration. This is happening at Josephine Sculpture Park next week. Oh, no, no, tonight. Gosh. Yeah. I keep thinking that we're on Thursday and we're not. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's Wednesday, today at 5 o'clock. Go do it. Um, celebrate the successful completion of JSP's capital campaign. Uh, they're going to tour the Grow With Us reforestation initiative, planting site, and unveil a sculpture, uh, donor tree, and donor signs throughout the park. Uh, program begins in the amphitheater, so enjoy light hors d'oeuvres and drinks in the event barn. This uh, celebration is open to the public. Yeah, and man, it's I all, think their stuff is free. Yeah, it's free. Most of the time. I mean, Jerry Catherine is out here, I think, talking about this. And it's just, week, they yeah. do so many awesome things. Yeah. And it's great that most of it is free to the public. Yep, so go out there and check it out tonight at 5 o'clock. Um, see what they're doing. The Saturday, Kathy. Yep. It's it's opening day for the Aquatic the Center. Pool. And you hear all the excitement and the, the, you know, screams of glee. Can you hear that from your house? The kids screaming at the yeah, pool? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's exciting. So that's this Saturday at 11 a.m. over at Juniper Hill Park. I think that's, you know, that's a signal that you need to get the boat going. I if know. Well, if the again, pools are opening. talk to my husband. <laughs> what's, he, what's he doing with his big job, I... doing job things? <laughs> you still got to make time to clean up the boat. I know. The water. I know. We're going to make time. I, I think that is one of the things he's doing this weekend okay. while Ella and I go do other stuff. Okay. Um, all right. It's the Battle of the Elite Saturday Ooh. at Second Street School from 7 to 10, hosted by the Woodford Storm Elite Athletic Club. It's a uh, AAU basketball tournament. Grades uh, three through eight uh, boys will compete during the tournament. Be three locations for simultaneous play. Top two teams in each division win trof- trophies. It's a two hundred dollar registration per team. Oh! So it's this Saturday uh, night at Second Street School. So do they win money or just the honor of winning? Uh, I, don't I don't know. I mean, it says we win trophies. So maybe that's trophies. what you're. Okay. You know, so there's an entry fee. Yeah, you know, pay for the officials and the guess, you know yeah. the okay. rental and stuff. Um, tell us, if you like bats, right? Love bats. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've had bats in our house. It's not fun. Hmm. But have you ever had like birds, like a bird come inside? We've had a bird. That we've had multiple birds. We've had, had a couple of bats. There was one. Uh, you know, being a Gen X kid, I was a latchkey kid. You know, yeah. we didn't have parents. That so we just went. We were yeah. feral, basically. And that's how we raise our children. <laughs> so I remember coming home from school one day, you know, three o'clock to an empty house. Yeah. And there was a bird flying around the hallway, and it freaked me out. I mean, I was like thirteen or something, you know. And I was like, I don't know what to do with it. And you get the broom. And the- I couldn't do that, you know. So I called dad. I was like, You got to come home and get this damn bird out. I'll be on the porch. <laughs> Uh, so, well, so. Bats of Kentucky is happening Saturday at 10.30 a.m., Wild Birds Unlimited, and that's on uh, uh, US-127. 
Uh, due to bat lore, and because they are only active at night, bats are often misunderstood huh. hmm. and maligned. Most bats are harmless, though. They are not blind or dirty. They don't usually get caught in people's hair or inf- infest homes with bed bugs. Hmm. I hadn't heard that. Hmm. And much like other mammals, less than one half of 1% of all bats contract rabies. Oh, well, that's good. Barely none. <laughs> Bats are highly beneficial for insect control, control as they are the only major predators of night flying insects. Hmm. They pollinate fruit and flowers. They disperse seeds in tropical rainforests, aiding in reforestation, mm. uh, and are an important source of fertilizer. Mm. The bat guano is actually mined from caves where bats live. How would you like that job? <laughs> <laughs> Hard pass. No. Uh, bats are also valuable in medical research, contributing to the development of navigational aids for the blind. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in learning more about local bats here in Kentucky, then join Wild Birds Unlimited as wildlife biologist Carrie Allison gives a presentation on these interesting creatures. Cool. Uh, join us a little earlier to sample our birds and beans, uh, bird-friendly coffee and donuts. This is a free event and all are welcome. So, again, that's happening Saturday at 10.30 okay. a.m. They'd like to have an estimate of how many people are coming. So, uh, if you're interested, give them a call at 352-2891, or you can email them at wbufrankfurt at gmail.com. Okay. That sounds like a cool program. It's Saturday morning at 10.30. Good job. Yeah. You got yeah. through that whole thing. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Memorial Day service at Frankfurt Cemetery. Hosted by the uh, VFW Post 4075. That's on Monday at 11 a.m. Uh, so it's the VFW Post and Auxiliary, American Legion Post 7, Elks Lodge 530, the Daughters of the American Revolution, and the Sons of the American Revolution. Mm. The service will include posting of the colors and service flags, the Pledge of Allegiance, the laying of memorial wreaths, moments of remembrance, and the ringing of the remembrance bell for Franklin Countyans t- killed in action. Okay. Uh, a 21 gun salute and taps. Public is invited afterward to the VFW Post 4075 on 2nd Street for soup and sandwiches. So that is starting at 11 a.m. on Monday uh, at the cemetery. Yeah, Memorial Day. I can't believe it's Memorial Day already. I know. We're there, man. Um, So another service is happening. Uh, VVA service planned at the uh, Kentucky Vietnam Veterans Memorial also on Monday. Uh, This is going to take place at 10 a.m. And the event will include a presentation of the colors, speakers, uh, the placing of memorial wreaths, and more. It's open to all veterans, their families, and the general public. Uh, Robert Silverthorne, who is retired from the U.S. Army, will be the keynote speaker. Um, Gregory M. Bethards, who is also retired from the Army, uh, is also the president of the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 454, will be in command of ceremonies. Uh, Edward Shrewsbury will give the opening prayer, and other participants include uh, VFW Post 1175's Rifle Squad and Bugler, and the Franklin County High School um, ROTC, the Junior ROTC. Cool. Yep. Um, but, so that's happening Monday at 10 a.m. So Monday lots of things happening Monday morning. Yeah, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Uh, all right. The South Frankfurt Food Share is coming up on Tuesday, May 30th from 5 to 7 at Dolly Graham Park. Order ahead to pick up a box of 8 to 12, 12 different fresh veggies grown by local farmers. Sliding scale prices help make this fresh food affordable for everyone. Visit fcmarket.org slash foodshare to learn more and order a share, or you can contact Connie at 502-382-1254. They'll also have a cooking demo with free samples from Kayla, our Fresh RX Nutrition Coordinator, fun activities with Paul Sawyer Public Library Youth Services, and free popcorn for all. Can I say something about Connie that is mentioned sure. in here? Connie Limley. Yeah, yeah. She's so good. She's in, she's... Got a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire when yep. it comes to the farmer's market and other programs. She runs uh, like a the farm to school program mm-hmm. at 2nd Street. She help, She runs the garden club at 2nd Street. I saw her out there on Sunday night. It was Mother's Day, Sunday night, out in the yard of 2nd Street working in the garden. That's and awesome. I was like, yeah. that's we need more of that. Yeah. in our community <laughs> and it takes that right because yeah. it's, it's hard to do that stuff yeah. especially for the you know the folks at the school they're just trying to yeah keep things exactly you know what i mean and, and so they need and help to get just if you yeah, want to go above in there and beyond. getting it done yeah um all right cool 
Well, uh, lots of things is always happening at the library, so let's get into our library events. All right, this Friday from 4.30 to 5.30, teens grade 6 through 12, what have you been reading and watching? Have you been creating art and writing? Mm -hmm. Share and discuss it all at Fandom with friends. Registration is required. Program will be held virtually. Registered patrons will be emailed a link to join this live virtual event via secure online meeting at least one hour prior to the event start time. So that is Friday, May 26th from 4.30 to 5.30. So cool way to get together with your friends, talk about what you've been into. What have you been reading lately? Get some recommendations. Uh, I haven't been reading much of anything. Me I've been uh, listening to some podcasts. Same. That's I listened to a book uh, about September 11th that was oh. interesting. It was called The Last Plane in the Sky oh, about uh, okay. Air Force One being, you know, up in uh, – it was an oral history, so it was like just all the different people involved, like you know. See, that sounds more together. up my alley. I think what has happened to me as I listen to more and more podcasts, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to focus on, on like a linear. Yeah. Right. No, it's yeah. true, and yeah. this is more of that kind of vibe because okay. you have different voices and people talking about different stuff. So, right. Uh, okay. That was good, but yeah, I haven't been reading a lot. I've been watching, uh, been watching some shows. Yeah. I finished the Waco. Uh, oh, you did the second season. I got to get back thing. on that. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Anyway, if the kids want to do that, too. if you want to have that, <laughs> ages or grade six through twelve, okay. Friday four thirty at the library or okay. virtually through the library. Uh, what about reading and stride? Reading and stride is happening Friday six to seven p.m. Uh, you can enjoy the benefits of active movement mm. and a dose of sunshine paired with a good book and new friends. That all okay. sounds good. Okay, it's a special time, night, and location. So group members, please meet at the Wapping Street Library entrance. Uh, and you can register, contact Paula Fault at 352 2665, that's that extension 111. Or you can uh, email her at paula.fault, that's F A U G H T, at PSPL.org. Okay. Um, Saturday from 1 to 3 at the community room, learn to play the original survival horror role playing game. Where they, the only thing that stands between you and a horde of shambling zombies are your wits and whatever gear you can scavenge. Join a group of survivors and face off against the living dead. Will you unravel the mystery of what caused the zombie outbreak and save the world, or will you join the ranks of the walking dead? You oh, must fish. register beforehand. Seating is limited. So that's Saturday from 1 to 3 at the community room. Did you see what that's called? Um, all, all flesh, flesh must, must be eaten. eaten. Hmm. You guys are big Walking Dead fans. What do they, they call them walkers? Is that what they call well, them? Well, they call them walkers, uh, biters. Mm. They, uh, different groups had different names okay. for them. Have you watched uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Last of Us yet? Yes, okay. watched Last of Us. And then Ella and I just watched Sweet Tooth, which is mm. kind of another apocalyptic thing, but they're they're not fighting well, against zombies just, or weird gonna be, stuff. They're gonna, y'all be ready when the time, <laughs> if it comes. Zombie apocalypse. It's all, it's all about the sickness. Um, okay. Well, like we said, there's uh, some some news in town, so let's uh, let's get into our headlines. Okay. It's not often we get to. We're not really breaking news, but it was like last night. It was yeah. like, whoa, what's happening? So what happened? So it's happened. <laughs> our uh, city manager, Laura Haig, submitted her letter of resignation citing lack of support for the city manager form of government here in Frankfurt. Uh, she noted the importance of respecting the city manager and the city staff and specifically pointing to the large number of city managers that have filled her chair over the past decade mm-hmm. or, and more. Uh, she encouraged the Board of Commissioners to take a hard look as to why this community has now had 12 city managers in 17 years that's a lot that's a lot that's about it does make you think yeah i don't know that i wonder how many i could name of the 12 because i've been here for 16 years yeah so i've probably known most of them i know the last few but um so this brings up the question of you know, uh, the the city manager form of government. Right. And I will say, I never ex- run, I never come across it before I came to before Frankfurt. Before you came here. You're yeah. just the mayor form yeah. of government. And I was like, what is a city manager? What yeah. does that do? Right. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying yeah. I had never experienced it in the places that I lived yeah. prior. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, you have a city manager and the mayor. Right. 
um, you know, the argument that comes to for the city manager form of government is you have someone who's professionally trained to do that and right. run the city right. rather than someone who's elected every four years. Sure. But as we're running now, we're getting a new city manager about every two years. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. It, and it is, so I've, I checked into it. Okay. Well, because, and so my first question is, has this come up before? Have we had, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of turnover. Have there been other times when it's like, maybe we need to look at uh, how we're doing this? I, I'm sure it has. There's yeah. no way that it has. Right. I mean, because I feel like the county, the city county merger comes up every four or five, yeah. ten years. Merger or whatever, comes up. And, and maybe yeah. the, the former government is yeah. something that might. Yeah. So maybe at some point, mm. you know, someone from city government will come talk to us about it. Okay. Uh, they weren't ready to do that today. I mean, I'm <laughs> of sure. Of course, it's yeah. all new. Right. But the process is like this because it it, it is something. Because uh, I was like, God, is that even possible to change the form of government? I mean, you that certainly we have? you don't want it to be so. Not that it's easy, but like you don't want to just be able to make this to go back and forth. You yeah. know what I mean? It needs yeah. to be a, a set process, right. which it is. Yeah. So I think, from my understanding, is that it would require you'd have to meet some requirements as far as there'd have to be a petition okay. to change the form of government with a you know a certain number of signatures, and uh, I'm sure there's other facets of mm-hmm. the requirements. In order for it to even be, put, it have to be put on the ballot okay. uh, for everyone to vote on. Is that something that uh, that the citizens would like, like a to referendum. see? A referendum. A referendum. And so I'm sure during that process there would be a whole, you know, like yeah, lots of city town, you know, town halls things, about right. what this means and what that means. Pros and, and cons. Pro, and yeah, pros and cons, so that the people could vote on it. Hmm. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, and again, <laughs> I mean. Uh, I have worked in other places for mayors who were in the, charge. The, yeah, they were the yeah. CEOs. In Lexington, that's how the yes. mayor is in charge. Yeah. Uh, so, again, coming coming here, uh, you know, it's, it is a little different. But I see both sides of the coin. I and see. S- some people would argue that the, maybe the reason why a mayor would have a four-year term instead of a two-year term would be for that kind of, you know, stability through right. the administrative yeah. you know, processes. Yeah. Um, so... Um, as far as moving forward right now, so, you know, is it something that our city commission is going to look at? Mm. Maybe the possibility of that? But with, regardless, it's not going to be a quick... No. They're going no, to no, need no. to put no. somebody in that place. No. You know. Oh, yeah. In the short sure. term. For, for sure. And maybe even in the so, longer term. Uh, you know, I know that there's probably what the process is going to be. They're going to have to, now that uh, the city manager has resigned, the commission is going to have to call a special meeting. Uh, to talk about uh, appointing an interim mm. city manager because somebody has to be in charge. Sure. <laughs> and then they'll probably then start looking at a timeline for setting up a new search for the city manager. Something that, you know, we're fully aware of how that works. <laughs> Lots of experience. <laughs> Lots of experience in, in, in uh, searching for a city manager and c- good candidates. and uh, So I'm sure that will all be coming uh, in the weeks ahead. Okay. Um, so, but we did, and again, we do wish Laura Hay the oh, best yeah, of luck. for sure. Uh, I mean, she's from Frankfurt, right? She come from home. From Frankfurt. She is another. She's a graduate of Frankfurt High School. Yep. Uh, has has worked all over the world. Um, wanted to come home and, and make a difference here. Mm-hmm. And as uh, she said in her letter, it just hasn't worked out. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. Um, and again, I feel, I, I know it's disappointing and, you know, you want to come back to your mm-hmm. hometown and mm-hmm. really do something. And, I, you know, I feel bad for that. But I do wish her the best. I feel like we've, uh, you know, had some good experiences with her here. Mm-hmm. And the mayor has been here to talk about the things that we've done here in the last two years. I think she's been here 22 months. Mm-hmm. So um, appreciate all the work that she did. And we wish her well in yeah. the future. Okay. Well, uh, one person goes when another comes home. And that's, well, not quite all the way home, but Brooklyn Miles. Hey. The former uh, Miss Kentucky mm-hmm. uh, basketball player committed to Tennessee out of from Franklin County uh, out of high school. Uh, announced that she was going to transfer um, probably a month or so ago okay. from Tennessee. She didn't, wasn't getting a whole lot of playing time. Uh, announced that she's coming back to Kentucky and going to play for the Big Blue. We like that. That's exciting. That's very exciting. I think she'll have an opportunity to, to you know, be a, a major part of uh of coach Elsie's team next year and okay. that was probably something that she would like to have well I mean, an opportunity it's a good reason to change schools yeah i figure that's what you're looking for right 
Yeah, a better, I mean, not necessarily more playing time, but certainly a better situation where you feel like you're... Better part mix of the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, that'll be exciting to watch as uh, she gets... It used to be that when you transferred, you have to wait a year. Now you can just start right up. So we'll be looking forward to seeing Brooklyn here, uh, or at least in Lexington, Okay. in the fall. Great. Closer to home. Yep. Um, We've got some not-so-great news. Yeah. Oh, man, I was so bummed to see this. Yeah. Uh, the services at the Simon House have closed. Uh, they announced this on Monday morning that the Simon House Day Center and its 24-hour shelter, uh, this is the location on East Main Street there at Glens Creek Road by the cemetery. Um, uh, it closed that afternoon, Monday mm-hmm. afternoon. So officials stated that the closing is due to lack of funds for staffing, uh, and they hope that it's just temporary. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can get some funds to get people back in there to work. Uh, the Campbell Street Shelter and uh, Community Program it, it will continue. So the, okay. the you know the Simon House is there on on Campbell Street and it has a program. It's still in okay. just the whole services and the center at uh, there at the cemetery. Not hmm. uh, executive staff were notified of the impending closures on Saturday following a strategic plan meeting, um, and then the staff was notified on Sunday and the residents were notified on Monday morning mm. and then it was over Monday yeah. afternoon. Mm. So I know there's a lot of trying to find placement for these people and I've, I've heard stories for people that had been volunteering there, just sad stories about the, some people had nowhere to go. Yeah. So city police, emergency management and administrative staff are working with the Simon House to find alternative shelter for current Simon House residents and employment opportunities for staff. Uh, short-term residents of the emergency shelter program can apply for a spot in one of the 16 beds in the longer-term program, uh, which allows those who have made a concerted effort to gain or maintain sobriety, employment, and help with a task uh, at the shelter, then they can stay up to three and a half months and okay. they sign an agreement. So there's rules you have to follow sure. and do that kind of stuff. So shelter director Mark Johnson said they will be hosting a resource fair for the staff um, today to help them file for unemployment, apply for public assistance, as well as help uh, with resumes and finding alternative employment. Okay. Well, so I'm hoping that yeah. something's going to come around and they can get funding and open that back up. I know that there's been, um, I know they, I feel like they were talking to the fiscal court not that long ago about, you know, needing yeah. some additional funds to sort of get through a tough spot yeah. and, um, I guess that's, you know, that only lasted so long. Right. So um, hopefully more to come from this and, and we can see a, a reopening you yeah. know, or at least a reimagining of the services. Right, right. Somehow figuring out how to service the people who need that. Yep. Um, okay, we got big uh, plant board news, Kathy. We do. We got, a, we got a public hearing set for a week from tonight. For the uh, those solar panels. Oh, look looking, at that! I mean, and that's they, that's an old picture. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all like, full now. I, sh- yeah. I need to get up there and take another picture. They uh, they're they're filling but it it's in. Pretty. Um, so we're gonna have a, a public hearing next Wednesday for um, to set like essentially I guess the rates mm-hmm. for for those panels. If Being you want part to, of that program. It, right, and yep. it's a voluntary voluntary program. Yeah. If you don't want to uh, participate, then that's fine. But if you want to, if you can't or haven't been able to or your house isn't set up to to install solar panels this is a way to kind of get your own Mm -hmm. you can do it through this and um so you can either subscribe as sort of like a monthly rate or you can buy one yourself just go ahead and buy it and then it's yours yeah and you get the and you basically get the credit on your bill for the uh amount of electricity that is generated from those panels. That is exciting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, so they're going to have a, having a meeting. Yep. Go ahead. Well, so for anything that the, the plant board does is establishing new rates or rules or you know policies, the tariffs, th- things like that, we go through a public hearing process. And so that's an opportunity for people, if they've got an opinion about yeah. how they think that this should be run, that's your opportunity to do that. And um, so... You can do that on Wednesday. Uh, the meeting is at is it at one o'clock? Yep. One over o'clock the, on Wednesday at the administration building over one fifty one Flynn Avenue, um, or you can submit comments, written comments. Okay. If you don't, if you can't get out on a Wednesday at one o'clock, or if you don't feel like speaking in public, send yeah. us an email, and those comments will be read into the record. The board will consider them, you know, as they make those decisions. So. Um, you can submit them uh, via email to to Kathy Poe, K Poe. K-P-O-E at F-E-W-P-B dot com 
or uh, if you want to speak, we ask that you, uh, you know, give us, so we know. Yeah. You can either give us a call or shoot an email to, to Kathy Poe, uh, and we'll make sure we get you on the list so that we, you know, we got room for you. All right. We expect you. Yep. <laughs> we know how much time to a lot so, for public comments. Um, so that's gonna, that's an exciting thing that, that the plant board is doing. Yes. And, you know, this is sort of part of that process. Yes. So, again, nothing, there's no, we're not raising rates on you know what I mean? No. This is just about voluntary s- program. It's exciting. Establishing um, the, the terms of these of this voluntary yeah. program. Some people are they they want to be part of a solar program. Mm-hmm. If they can't do it at their home, uh, this gives them the opportunity to do it as a group. Um, however much you want, or however little you want. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, okay. Anything okay. else? Or... I think that's good. We're, okay. We've got that covered. Okay. Cool. Let's. Um, Let's talk about what's coming up on Cable 10, then we'll check in on our Facebook comments oh, okay. before we get into Hot Topics. All right, it's Wednesday, Kathy, and mm-hmm. that means uh, Civic Clubs. Uh, after, well, first, we'll have Global Connections with Bill Miller at 5 and 5.30, I would say. The longest-running program on Cable 10 now. I guess so. Um at 6 and 6.30, we'll have the Optimist Club. And then at 7.30, the Optimist Rising Star Program for April 20th. Oh, that was good. Were you there for I that? I was, yeah. Okay, so check that out at 7.30. Lots of cool kids. And then at 8.30, the Franklin County High School Spring Choir Concert from May 11th, which is always uh, a treat. I'm so sure. check that out tonight at 8.30. Uh, tomorrow at 5, we'll have some live uh, government action. Ooh. Fiscal court work session and meeting, and then uh, that'll be streaming on the Franklin County Facebook uh, Fiscal Court Facebook page and the Cable 10 YouTube channel. And then on Friday, we'll be back here around 10. It'll be me and Zach at 10. And then the uh, if you miss the Spring Choir concert tonight, it'll be on again on Friday at 5. And then the Frankfurt International Jazz Day concert at 6 30. Um, that was back at the end of April. So we're getting close to a uh, summer concert. When's the first I one think. of those? Uh, after, after Expo? After the holidays. And after Expo, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah, probably after Expo. Okay. you got to go see Expo Idol yeah. on that Friday night. Sort of kick, exactly. kick off the summer. Yeah. Um, okay, let's check in on our question of the day. If, if you've missed it, it is, uh, what is your perfect day with the, with the great weather and, and like that? So Kathy Jennings says, sitting by the pool or near the ocean and chill. Yeah, I like that. Just be still. Yep. Be quiet, because you know most of our lives we're done just running around, doing, doing, doing. That's right. At least for my, my life. I know. Uh, so sometimes it's nice to just be still. Yeah. Leslie McShane says seventy-five degrees, no humidity, bike ride, pool, snacks, good mm, tunes. That's pretty good. I, I like, like that. It. I think we're gonna do that this weekend. Add, I'll probably add cold <laughs> beverage to that. I think that's, that's, in, go, that's in, implied. implied. <laughs> snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy Jennings says also spending the day with her husband or her family. Don't want to leave those people out. Okay. And of course her dogs. Okay. And shout out to Andy Krause. Hey. Uh, he says perfect day for him would be sunny skies, maybe 75 degrees and just enjoying life. When he worked at Kroger, one of his favorite customers would tell him every day is a good day. Some are just better. Oh, sunny like, side. That's a good sentiment. Yeah. Like um, all right. Well, uh, thanks for participating in the show. Yes. We still got a few minutes left. If you want to hop on and let us know what your idea of the perfect day is, maybe yeah. just being here with you, Kathy, is my idea. Of the perfect day. <laughs> okay. Can I, I know it wasn't on, on the community calendar. Can I talk a little bit about Expo? Sure. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about Expo. Okay. We have we have a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Expo next weekend, June second and third, Friday and Saturday. We're going to have a special show mm-hmm. around 10, uh, live from the expo. Have we picked out the, the hosting? Do we know who's hosting? I don't think we've t- <laughs> Because last time we did four, four, and that was a lot. I think we're going to do, I think we'll we're be there rotate. and maybe switch out okay. some. All right. Have, I you don't check, know. have you checked out with David? It's a work in progress. Check with the boss. But that. it's going to be a lot happening. Uh, we're going to be live from Serafini downtown. Uh, and everything opens at 10, and then that's when our show starts. So there should be a lot of activity. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about uh, the stuff going on down there. They're going to have a children's festival. They're mm-hmm. going to have a car show. They are doing the carnival rides. Cool. Uh, capital... where's, where's the? Where's that going to be? The okay, the carnival way. rides, from my understanding, mm-hmm. 
Don't quote okay, me. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I thought put we me knew. On the spot. I thought we knew the answer. I thought we knew. We do know the answer. <laughs> this is what I've heard. The carnival rides are going to be where uh, in the uh, parking lot there at Riverview Park, where the farmers market is. Okay. Car show is going to yeah. be in front of the old YMCA and that parking lot and the street there because okay. I guess they're going to close off the street. Okay. Uh, and then all of the vendors will be along um, Broadway. Broadway. Do um, we know where we're going to be? With different tents. No, I um, checked on that yesterday and she said she'd let me know. Okay. We'll be on Broadway. Okay. Come so, say I mean, hi. you can't miss us if yeah. you come to Broadway because we'll also, we're going to have a tent set up and we're going to have the water monster there uh, and we'll have some swag giveaways and we'll be talking about all the fun stuff that You'll we do. You'll have your headshots there. Yeah, you signing, just, signing yeah. headshots for people. If you have any, we'll have probably have some handouts about this uh, community solar program. Mm-hmm. If you have questions, things you want to know, we're here to help. And uh, again, they'll be doing the uh, expo idol mm-hmm. uh, Friday night, the finals. And then on Saturday, I think Saturday night is the fireworks. 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 So a whole Friday and Saturday of activities down at the expo and uh, we hope everybody gets a chance to make it down there. We've had some people question, where is the expo? Right. So where is it? It's on Broadway. It's on Broadway. It's downtown. You can't miss it. Can't Come miss on it. down. <laughs> cool. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, we got a few minutes left. Do you okay. want to knock out a couple of hot topics? Or you do you want, want to just talk about like city manager form of government? you want to get into that We can that talk about more? that. I mean, that's fine <laughs> with me. <laughs> um, all right. Let's do some hot topics. Okay. Do you, do you play the lottery, Kathy? I don't. Yeah. I don't really know. If, if you can't win, if you don't play. <laughs> I know. That's what, that's they what say. I've heard for years. <laughs> uh, Angela Ryan won more than $504,000 through the Kentucky Lottery's Cluster Jackpot Online game on May 13th. She won the game's progressive jackpot on a wager of one whole American dollar. Uh, it, according to the game's official rules, with an entry of one dollar, the chances of winning are about one in five million. Uh, here's the game's interface. Don't worry, you're not getting a pop-up ad. That's really what the game looks like. Uh, <laughs> it just so happens that Northeastern Kentucky woman also won the state's largest instant win prize in the lottery's online history. I placed the bets and saw the hearts go up on the screen, she told lottery officials. I thought it was only going to be a 20 or $30 win. Angela and her husband, Reese, quickly visited the Kentucky Lottery's office to verify their winnings and ended up walking away with a check for $360,386.86 after taxes. Holy moly. They plan to use their winnings for some cross-country travel. That sounds good. They own a pair of food truck businesses and now plan to expand uh, after using the jackpot to pay off some debts. Nice. You guys totally changed our lives, Reese told lottery officials. I'd be, I, I like that. Get you like a good, you know, like that would be, I think that's how, well, I mean, we talk about like millions and millions, like yeah. that's a different deal. But if you're yeah. talking about like $500,000, I'm going to like blow it on it something can, really fun yeah. initially. And then, yeah, then pay off some debts. Take a invest portion in of your, it and do something responsible. Your, yeah, invest in your business. And invest then just in continue yourself. on with life. Right. And it's not. And maybe it's, you got a little extra and, you know, retirement can little, be a little, little, little cushion. Er, early, you know, early <laughs> retirement, have some, leave something for your kids. Yeah. Don't just spend it all yeah. before you kick That's the bucket. That's my dad. He said he's going to spend it all. <laughs> <laughs> so you go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so congratulations to her. One dollar bet, man. All, all right. right. Tell us about Kurt Cobain's guitar. It's crazy. Uh, Kurt Cobain's guitar, broken guitar even, hmm. sells for nearly $600,000. Wow. Uh, the Fender Stratocaster is covered in scratches and chipped wood. The names of Cobain and his former band Nirvana are misspelled. <laughs> and the guitar itself, which was once smashed and put back together, is no longer playable. Huh. Uh, but this past weekend, the broken guitar was sold at Julian's Auctions for a whopping $596,000. Nearly ten times more than the opening price. <laughs> showing that the adoration for the rock icon is alive and well nearly 30 years after he died. That would be a pretty cool thing to have. You're definitely not yeah. going to play that. That's something you no. put up on the wall. No, and yeah, It's yeah. neat that it's broken because, you know, that's sort of his thing. It's his thing. Well, you know what I mean? Like, it means that it was well-loved well. <laughs> or treated. But, yeah, $600,000. Well, I mean, if you have the money. That's somebody who's spending it all. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody won the yeah. lottery? Yeah, you win that lottery. What, what did you get out of the lottery? I bought a guitar. Broken guitar. Broken guitar that I can't play. <laughs> um, 
Uh, we, I listened to uh, on the way to the soccer game on Sunday that yeah. we won uh, with the boys. We listened to uh, Nevermind. I hadn't okay. I didn't played that album in a long time. It's good. That's Kids good. liked it. Oh, good. It's, it's it held held up well good. over the years. <laughs> I remember when that came out a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Um, all right, we got. Well, let's do one more. Okay. Is, this, is, this, is it my turn? Your turn. Okay. A man has been indicted by a grand jury on charges of stealing a pair of ruby red slippers worn by Judy, Judy Garland and the Wizard of Oz. Shoes were stolen nearly two decades ago in 2005 and recovered in a 2018 FBI sting operation, but no arrests were made at the time. Terry Martin was indicted Tuesday with one count of theft of a major artwork. Mm. So that's interesting. So it's like more important if it's, you know, or it's like a bigger charge if it's something important. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, because there's some, probably not those, but some of the ruby slippers are like in the Smithsonian. Right. Fair. Yeah. Uh, the Minneapolis Star Tribune reported that Martin is 76 and leaves 12, lives 12 miles south of uh, Judy Garland Museum in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. She wore several pairs of the ruby slippers during production of the 1939 musical, but only four authentic pairs remain. When they were stolen, the slippers were insured for $1 million. Oh. The current market is about $3.5 million. Ooh. The slippers were on loan to the Judy Garland Museum in the late doctor's hometown when someone climbed through a window and broke the display case. And your little dog, too. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is that good? We've done enough damage uh, for the day? I think we're good. So I'm not going to be here Friday, and it's going to be a holiday weekend. Why don't okay. you tell me what you're doing? For, uh, for the weekend? Yeah. Uh, I want to know what people are doing. Yeah, we got, we got uh, the youngest one has, has his final soccer games this weekend. Yeah. So we'll play those on Saturday. Yeah. And then I think we're going to my cousin's on Sunday. Okay. Out to the, to Beaver Lake. That's where they are in okay. uh, Anderson County. So we'll spend some time on the water. On the water. Hopefully they got their boat in the water. <laughs> Responsible boat I'm going to give you Steve's number. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so that's it. Hopefully, it looks like the weather's going to be pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited for an extra day. Almost I like know. three I day know. weekends. Well, so we're excited. We're finally going to celebrate Mother's Day with my mom. Oh, fun. She's back in town. So she's coming, and we're going to take all, all the girls are going to go see The Little Mermaid. Oh, that's opening this weekend. It yeah. is. So well, while we're doing that, I'm hoping Steve's getting the boat ready. Okay. That's a good plan. <laughs> uh, yeah, we may go. I know the boys are excited about that too. So yeah. we may go get that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, don't forget to follow us on Facebook. You can do the main plant board page or cable 10, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell. So you get notified every time we go live. If you have any questions or comments, or you want to share your community event or, uh, organization, uh, you can contact us at cable 10 at fewpb.com. Uh, or you can text us on the text machine at three, five, three, zero, two, three, three. And if you enjoy the show, we'd love to hear from you. And just uh, go to the QR code on the screen right now and leave us a five-star review on Google. Uh, I want to thank our guests, Paul yeah. Looney mm -hmm. and Steve Brooks, for being here from the uh, Frankfurt Independent Schools. What is it? Foundation. Foundation. Education Foundation. Education Foundation. They're raising money for the kids and for the school. FISEF.org, right? That's their website. Yep. FISEF.org. So check that out if you want to contribute. Uh, I want to thank Zach and Papa and David for their help uh, on today's episode. Yep. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. Me and Zach. Hey. So enjoy your day. Weekend. Enjoy your day off on Friday. Yeah. And uh, remember, if it happens around town, it's on around ten. Around 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it.